Hi, everybody. It's Professor Mitchell continuing with chapter three. In this video, we'll look at section 3.2 on a linear programming problem. In this section, we'll talk uh, about a specific problem in linear programming, uh, tabulating data, translating the constraints, the objective function, the linear programming problem again, the production schedule, uh, talking about uh, there not being any waste and the feasible set. So <laughs> I expect these things will make absolutely zero sense right now. Uh, they will make a lot more sense once we look at the problem. So here is the problem. And in this section, all we're going to do is set up the problem and get it to a certain point. And then in the next section, we will uh, talk about the theory of how to find the solution. A furniture manufacturer makes two types of furniture, chairs and sofas. The manufacture of a chair requires six hours of carpentry, one hour of finishing, and two hours of upholstery. Manufacture of a sofa requires three hours of carpentry, one hour of finishing, and six hours of upholstery. Each day, the factory has available 96 labor hours for carpentry, 18 labor hours for finishing, and 72 labor hours for upholstery. The profit per chair is $80, and the profit per sofa is $70. And the question is, how many chairs and how many sofas should be produced each day to maximize the profit? All right, so let's talk about how to set this problem up. Obviously, it sounds uh, very complicated. It turns out it's not that hard. It is a little time consuming. So first, it's helpful to tabulate the data given in the problem. So here's how we do that. We kind of put it in the form of a table. So across the top, we write down the things that we are manufacturing. And then down the side, we write the uh, resources that we have a limited amount of, and then we put the profit on the bottom. So now we will translate each of the constraints, which are restrictions on labor hours, into mathematical language. So we're gonna let X be the number of chairs and Y be the number of sofas, respectively. Uh, and by the way, make a note, that in general, when you're setting up a linear programming problem, X and Y are going to stand for the uh, things that are in the actual question. So the question in this problem was how many chairs and how many sofas should be manufactured each day to maximize profit. So that's what we're uh, going to name X and Y after. All right, so our constraints, uh, the first one represents carpentry. So the number of labor hours per day is going to come from the number of hours required per chair times the number of chairs plus the number of hours required per sofa times the number of sofas. So looking back at your table, remember each chair required six hours of carpentry and I believe each sofa required three hours. So that translates into six X plus three Y would be the number of labor hours spent manufacturing X chairs and Y sofas. What makes this a constraint is that we were told that the maximum number of labor hours available for carpentry was 96. So that means that 6X plus 3Y has to be less than or equal to 96. And now we're going to do the same thing for finishing and for upholstery. So similarly, the finishing constraint is going to be X plus Y is less than or equal to 18 because it said that each chair and each sofa required one hour of finishing. So this is really one X plus one Y. And the upholstery constraint turns into two X plus six Y is less than or equal to 72 because each chair required two hours of upholstery each sofa required six hours of upholstery, and there is a maximum of 72 labor hours available per day for upholstery. 
And then finally, this one's easy to forget. You just try to get yourself to automatically put this one in every time. The number of chairs and sofas, of course, can't be negative. So X and Y both have to be greater than or equal to zero. <clears throat> okay, next we talk about the objective function. The objective in this problem is to optimize profit. So let's translate the profit into mathematical language. Uh, the profit is going to come from the profit from chairs plus the profit from sofas. Uh, which in turn will come from the profit per chair times the number of chairs plus the profit per sofa times the number of sofas. Looking back, we see that the profit per chair is $80. The profit per sofa is $70. So our objective function is going to be 80X plus 70Y. All right, so this manufacturing problem can now be written as a mathematical problem. We want to find X and Y for which 80X plus 70Y is as large as possible and for which the following constraints hold simultaneously. 6X plus 3Y has to be less than or equal to 96. X plus Y has to be less than or equal to 18. 2X plus 6Y has to be less than or equal to 72. And X and Y both have to be greater than or equal to zero. This is called a linear programming problem. All right, next we talk about the production schedule. In the manufacturing problem, each pair of numbers, x comma y, that satisfies the system of inequalities is called a production schedule. All right, so in this example, we're going to look at which of the following two ordered pairs, 11, 6, and 6, 11, is a production schedule for the set of constraints that we just developed. So for this, I'm gonna switch over to the tablet. All right, starting with 11.6. So uh, just plug the ordered pair into each uh, inequality and make sure it makes it true. So starting with, 6x plus 3y is less than or equal to 96. That says 66 plus 18 is less than or equal 96. That is true. <coughs> uh, the second one would say 11 plus 6 is less than or equal to 18. That is also true. 2 times 11 plus 6 times 6, is that less than or equal to 72? 22 plus 36 is definitely less than or equal to 72. And of course, 11 and 6 are both greater than or equal to 0. So since that ordered pair satisfies all of the inequalities, that means uh, 11 chairs and six sofas is a production schedule, okay? So I'm not saying that 11 chairs and six sofas will maximize the profit, but it at least fits all the constraints. All right, next, uh, what about six chairs and 11 sofas? Well, six times six plus three times 11, this is a better way to write it the way I'm writing it now. 36 plus 33 is less than or equal to 96, so that's okay. 6 plus 11 is less than or equal to 18. 2 times 6 plus 6 times 11 is 12 plus 66. Uh-oh. That is not less than or equal to 72. That is equal to 78. That is not true. And we can actually stop there. All it takes is for it to uh, make even one of the inequalities false. It is not part of the production schedule. If we tried, or it is not a production schedule. If we tried to make six chairs and 11 sofas, we would run out of upholstery. All right, going back to the presentation.
Okay, so I thought it might be worth showing a little bit of work for that one. Okay, it seems clear that a factory will operate most efficiently when its labor is fully utilized. In other words, we use up all of the uh, carpentry, all of the finishing, and all of the upholstery. So this would require X and Y to satisfy this system of equations. However, if you were to graph uh, the three lines that uh, represent those equations, you find that there is no one point that all three of them have in common. Okay, so that means that there is no combination of chairs and sofas that will exactly use up all of the uh, carpentry, all of the finishing and all of the upholstery. So probably what's going to happen is that we will use up two of those things and we'll have some of the other thing left over. All right, finally, our feasible set. The set of solutions to the system of inequalities is called the feasible set of the system. I think we mentioned that at the very end of the last video. This represents all possible production schedules. All right. So I'm actually not going to uh, do all the work for this example. So this is just graphing the um, solution set of this system of inequalities. So what I would like you to do is pause the video and uh, try to do that yourself, right? We talked about how to do it in the last section. And then when you're all done, come back and we'll compare notes. Okay, so here is what the boundary lines look like. And that is uh, the solution set. See, they're doing this a little differently, right? They're putting all of the inequalities in standard form, which I usually don't do. However, hopefully you did this and you found something similar. All right, and so that space left in white there, that is our feasible set. Any ordered pair X comma Y within this five-sided uh, figure here or on the boundary uh, is a production schedule. All right, and that's uh, actually the end of this section. Just wanted to show you how to set up one of these problems. So in the next section, we'll talk about how to find the solution. A linear programming problem asks us to find the point or points in the feasible set of a system of linear inequalities at which the value of a linear expression involving the variables called the objective function is either maximized or minimized. And that's going to do it for section 3.2. We'll see you next time.